We got a new president, but we got an old economy. Hey everybody, Scott Walters, buckle up, strap in. We got a hard hitting, pull no punches, no sugar coating it, no rainbows, no sunshine. I'm just going to give it to you and give it to you straight. We got a good one to unpackage today. Welcome to the show. I hope everybody's doing great. So good news. We've got a new president and it was just in time. You know, one of the things I try to stay out of the political arena, there's always one thing that separates or a couple things that separate people, right? Politics, religion, right? And our jobs to really come together. But we really got to, you know, read between the lines and look between the economic cracks and get a temperature check of what's really going on. Now, the realities are this, friends. In, in 2008, it was uh, the housing market was too big to fail. Unfortunately, the housing market is too big to save. It proved that in 2008. Even with government intervention and bailouts, it couldn't sustain itself. And the realities are this, friends. I don't know if it was the last administration potentially just hiding uh, facts or are letting the fake media not report on the facts because they needed to you know concentrate on election agendas rather than what was really going on most Americans are just trying to get through their day not really too totally interested with the you know economics political political or even social uh you know, topics. Uh, they just want to get through, you know, working for the weekend, most Americans, right? And so that's one thing about Trump. He's kind of this blue collar billionaire. I mean, he's proved himself to clearly be a fighter. And clearly that resonated with the majority of Americans. Um, I'm personally pretty happy about that because I didn't really like the direction that I was seeing things go with a lot of this, uh, I don't know, I guess it's wokeism. Um, I got kids and I really want to protect them from uh, predators and agendas. And, you know, we've got a lot of a swamp to drain all across the map, whether it's Hollywood, Washington, you you name it. We've got some big, big issues. So I think we're going to potentially, or we're seeing a little bit of a, I don't know, you could almost categorize it as a sucker's rally. A lot of people are really now hopeful that Trump's, uh, you know, in office and potentially he's a businessman and handed us a really good economy when he held office back in uh, 2000 in 16 through 20. So, you know, there's a good chance we could see that again. Unfortunately, back in 2016, when he adopted this country or took over leadership, he, he was given a much bigger or much better economy to deal with than the one that he's being handed. Now, we did a lot of damage, right? We've got a lot of uh, new, I guess, residents in our country that are going to have to go. And we got a lot of, I don't know, debt to deal with, with inflation and the amount of money that was poured into the economy during a uh, stimulus now with our, our balance sheet pretty much uh, mathematically unbalanceable. I mean, there's some big hurdles. And of course, you know, he's going to have to sugarcoat it a little bit to keep the spirits high of Americans. So we feel like we get out of this. But at some point, he will probably, my guess, have to let people know, hey, Listen, we've got a big mess, a cleanup on aisle 25 that we're going to have to deal with. And and that's going to be his job. And he's got four years to do it. And ho hopefully, I mean, now that we control not only the presidency, but the Senate and the House as well. I mean, we've got a pretty good opportunity to correct the ship. Unfortunately, here's the challenge, my friends. We overheated the biggest asset class in the world, the U.S. housing market. And I think it's going to be interesting because as a real estate agent, I'm dealing with a lot of people that were like, hey, I th we're going to wait till after the election to see what happens. Um, and so, you know, I get that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I think we could see a potentially a dead cat bounce, maybe a sucker's rally. But the reality is this, what we did to the economy when we overheated it at the magnitude that we did, it's going to have some blowback and the dust will settle. I mean, it's doing that now. Right now, we've hit the ceiling. It's really at its tipping point. And it's good. It's I don't really care if even if you turn the money printer back on, unless it was accompanied with all the other stimulus measures that came along with it when uh, it was initially turned on. I don't think you could get another another run in real estate. I mean, it's really now already the unaffordability index is to a point now. It's just, it, I can't, it, it can't sustain any more growth. And that would be artificial growth. And then inflationary fires would start all over again. So unfortunately, and Trump probably knows this, we're going to need to see, and we're already seeing a lot of areas starting to basically exhibit crash behavior. And um, eventually mainstream media is going to, and especially the other side of the aisle, they're going to put everything under a magnifying glass on them now and really scrutinize everything that's going on. And, you know, unfortunately, just winning the election is not enough 
to correct the ship. We're going to have to get in there and do a, get our hands dirty, really. And there's going to be blowback. Here's my anticipation moving forward is I believe this bubble, well, it did. I don't believe it. It just did. It eclipsed the 2008 bubble in terms of growth index. It was overnight appreciation to never seen before highs. It outpaced it and it outgrew it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, there's going to be a lot of a lot of work to do with the housing market. And then even with government intervention, which they will initiate government of inter uh, intervention before the crash really gets into, you know, it's just a flat out crash now. It's 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 doing its thing um, and there's no stopping it. I mean, that's what happened in 2008. We initiated government intervention with loan modifications, trying to keep people in their homes and not get foreclosed on, but a foreclosure crisis ended up coming. Um, so again, like with even turning on the money printer, it's not going to do it. And that's why I've always said at the beginning of the show, even as a real estate agent, um, you know, that I don't care if you go to 0% interest or you have a 0% interest rate, which you don't, um, if you can't handle your payments, you're losing the house. And because the, re the U.S. real estate market is the biggest asset class in the world, if we lose it, we will lose everything. It will thrust us into a deep cycle recession, taking jobs along with it so you know here's the thing moving forward um you know you do not in my opinion i mean you can but you do not need to buy courses on how to learn how to navigate these waters all you need to do is subscribe to this channel it's free and you can't be free and um i'm helping tons of you and i'll continue to do that you just need a top level agent that's been around for a while and seen a boom bust cycle and is willing to go out there and write your offers and then watch shows like this as i kind of prepare you uh, physically, spiritually, mentally, financially to just be able to go write offers and then see if you can make something stick. And then we got to, you know, basically identify what your risk uh, threshold is. You know, if it's not in your own city, you got to look outside your city and we got to get you an agent and let's go write some offers. I mean, there's places right now we can go buy in Michigan for 10 grand, right? I mean, you can hold property pretty cheap and just hold it, have a piece of of the American dream on standby holding it, or we can put a renter in there and, you know, let them make your payment and maybe get you a little positive cash flow and just start you off putting your pinky toe in. You don't have to go all in. I don't want you to go all in, even as a real estate agent who has financial gain. If you do, I just don't want to see you do that because happy customers are repeat customers. And I don't want the call saying, Scott, that house you sold us. Now we can't afford it. And there's a big recession. And you know, we don't know what to do. And then I got to come list you as a short sale and tell the bank, take it or leave it. Otherwise, we're going to just walk away and put the keys under the mat. I mean, this is the things that happen. These are the realities that happen. So, you know, really, friends, the, the main thing we have to understand is Trump's got a big cleanup on aisle uh, 25 to deal with. This is going to be massive. This, I mean, there is a lot of unwinding to do. I mean, this guy's got a way bigger job in front of him than he did the last time he took the helm. And at some point, he's going to let us know that. Like, we got a lot to deal with. And it's going to get probably, he's going to have to get his hands dirty. So it's good that we got this guy clearly a fighter because he's going to have to get in there and, and get his hands dirty. I mean, he's talking about doing mass deport, uh, de uh, deportations. And that will get a lot of the other side really their ruffles feathered because we're not treating them humane. It doesn't matter. You came into the country illegally and the American tax dollar cannot foot the bill to, to let you sit in a hotel room somewhere and have free health care and subsidies to, to, to do that. We just can't. We can't tolerate that. So we got to get you out and then have you come back the right way. And we've got a lot of basically unsavories that came in that are actually harming American citizens, hard paying, tax paying citizens uh, in a criminal way. So, I mean, this stuff, this is probably, in my opinion, number one, secure the borders. I mean, that's the number one job of the president. Give us secured borders. And our last administration, unfortunately, did the exact opposite. In final thoughts, I come to you as a friend, as a content creator, as a real estate guy that wants to see you not only win in real estate, win in life. Understand the waters you're swimming in now, shark infested Trump. Welcome back to the swimming pool. We're really glad that you made it. We're cheering for you. We know if anybody can do it, it's you, but we know this will not be an easy job. We're probably going to see a sucker's rally and a dead cat bounce. 
but it will be short-lived because unfortunately the last administration overheated the biggest asset class in on, on planet earth the u.s housing market it exhibited bubble behavior again if we can save this one it would be the first time in human history we saved a bubble that ex exhibited this type of bubble behavior I think it's probably too big to save. In fact, we're already seeing many people that bought during the crisis forced selling occur for less than they paid. It is in fact started and unfortunately it's something that needs to happen because you can't let the housing market do that. If you're out there shopping right now, which I strongly urge you to do, you need to go out there and be playing in this very sketchy environment so when if and when you're you're going to make a move on something you're comfortable playing in this environment if you're on the sidelines thinking and watching and you're not working towards it you'll never get off the fence you've got to get out there and do it my advice is as you're shopping properties and this will be a second uh, video that we're going to have to expose zillow on a little bit and all the other what search engine websites is too because they're just selling lead service to agents so they're hiding a lot of the data to make sure they can sell leads to agents and they're going to get more and more desperate as the sales dry up because that's how they made all their money and now their earnings reports are suffering what you need to look at and what they always show you though is what your estimated cost to carry the property at their current list price is if that current pro uh, cost to carry the property is within the property's rent range, which they used to show us in black and white, but they aren't anymore for what I just revealed to you because it by if they're handicapping the property by showing the rent range, they don't want to show it anymore. So they're not. It's really kind of uncool. But you can just go look up the comps on your own and check rent ranges. If your rent range is within that cost to carry the property, you're probably in a good environment. If it's not close, meaning it's costing you way much more to carry this property the standard amount down at today's interest rate than you could rent the thing for it might be a risky purchase but that's where i'll come in and blow the lid off it every step of the way because it's not only what we need it's in fact what we deserve if you appreciate the content i want to humbly ask you to give the video a like subscribe to the channel leave a comment below i'd love to hear from you social media links in the description of this video if you'd like to contact me there along with channels i've appeared on i think you might enjoy if you need help buying or selling real estate here in america i have the biggest network of top rated agents in the nation ready to assist you it would be our honor and our privilege to do so email in the description for you as well also if you're watching from your television set today and you enjoyed this video you're gonna love the next video and there's an easy subscribe icon for your convenience. As always, thank you for your time. Please go make it count today. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video.